The Mishkan, the tabernacle, has been built, and for the first seven days of its inauguration, Moses, Moshe, has been officiating. But on the eighth day, it's time to install his brother Aaron, Aharon, as the Kohen Gadol, the high priest. Moshe beckons Aharon to come near. Rashi, the greatest of the commentators, seizes on that phrase and wonders, why did Moshe have to encourage Aaron to come closer? And Rashi answers, because Aaron was embarrassed. So Moshe said to him, that's why you were chosen which sounds like there are some words missing. Moshe should have said, Aaron, don't be embarrassed. You're the best man for the job. That's why you were chosen. Why the missing words? I heard a great explanation as follows. Moshe is saying to Aaron, you're embarrassed. You're reluctant to take the position. That's why you were chosen. God doesn't want the guy who spent the most on campaign ads. He doesn't want the guy whose hand was in the air saying, ooh, ooh, call on me. He wants the person who's reluctant. As the sages say, if you run towards honor, honor runs away from you. But if you run away from honor, then honor pursues you. Which reminds me of my favorite public speaking story. In the 1500s, there was an incredible collection of rabbis in the mystical city of Tzfat in Israel. One of them was the al Sheikh, the famous speaker and writer. Another was the Arizal, the Kabbalist. One year, the al Sheikh got up in the synagogue to give his Shabbos Haggadol Drasha, one of his big speeches of the year. The Arizal was in attendance, and in the middle of the lecture, he got up unobtrusively and left the synagogue. Afterwards, the al Sheikh went straight to the books, checked everything that he had said, all his sources, and he could not find his mistake. So he went to see the Arizal, the great Makobo, and he said, please tell me what I said that was wrong. And the Arizal said, you were perfect. You didn't say anything wrong. So the al Sheikh said, then why did you leave? The Arizal said, let me explain. I was watching you deliver that beautiful lecture, and I can see in your face that you were enjoying the fact that it was you that was delivering such a beautiful speech, and I wasn't comfortable with that. Now, I don't think the Arizal is suggesting that you can't take any psychic satisfaction from a job well done, but what he's highlighting that particularly at that moment after you've crushed it, you've got to remind yourself that all the talent, the ability, the resources that you needed to accomplish that feat they all came from God. You should be just as happy that it was you as you would have been had it been your friend who performed that act. The sages also tell us that in every generation, there are 36 hidden righteous people, Lamed Vavniks, 36 hidden Sadiqim, in whose merit the world continues to exist. We don't know who they are. By definition, if someone would announce that I'm one of the 36, we wouldn't believe him because that show of lack of humility would automatically disqualify the person. So you don't know when you're going to have a brush with greatness. There is a problem on the main hallway chalkboard. It took my colleagues and I more than two years to prove it. And I'm hoping that one of you might prove it by the end of the semester. This is correct. Who did this? One of those 36 could be your neighbor, could be the person you sit next to in synagogue, could be your local grocer. You don't know because they're not preening, they're not showboating, they're not self-congratulating out in public. They're quietly, humbly putting their heads down and doing the right thing, realizing that all their talents, all their abilities came from God. Mm -hmm.